Hi folks, the Filipina P here. And when you come to the Philippines on vacation, it's pretty easy to rely on various forms of transportation like jeepneys, trikes, and sometimes even taxis. This is exactly what I advise you to do because until you learn the rules of the road or that there really aren't any rules of the road, you'll be much better off letting someone else do the driving. But for those of you that plan on staying a while, transportation's an issue you're gonna have to deal with because unless you live in a big city, it's really inconvenient to always be looking for a ride. Most of you end up getting your own vehicle, typically a motorbike. And although you might not like the traffic, you feel confident that if you just drive safely, you'll be okay. Unfortunately, no matter how you drive, danger lurks around every curve. As the folks on my Patreon page already know, last week, the danger came for me. I was just going down the road, minding my own business, when a motorbike crashed into the side of the car I was driving, and I ended up taking the woman that hit me to the hospital. Long story short, because I had the bigger vehicle, it was presumed that I was at fault, and even though I didn't do anything wrong, I'm the one that has to pay, including the hospital bills. Now that might sound crazy to you, but welcome to the wild west of Filipino traffic laws. And for those of you who think you're immune to the danger here, I thought it might be a good idea to show you just what it's like out on the road. So for today's driving lesson, I was able to borrow a car, but the only one I can get it has a manual transmission. Lucky for us, I know how to handle a stick. So let's go. Here we go, guys. One thing you should be aware of while driving here in the Philippines, folks, is that most drivers don't look where they're going. They're just going to pull in right in front of you and without checking if the traffic is clear. Basically, it is your responsibility to check and watch out for them. And um, yeah, the lanes here, eh, that doesn't it doesn't mean anything to them. 90% of the time, they're just going to swerve from left to right and suddenly they're in front of you. So beware of that. So welcome to Dumaguete City. This is in downtown area. As you can see, I'm on my lane and this guy, the trike driver just decided to make a U-turn. So everybody would stop. Isn't that great? And this is a very busy street. And as you can see, there is no traffic light either. Most motorbikes are just parked right beside the road. And if you're not paying attention, they're just going to pull right in front of you or beside you. Just like this guy almost hit me. And if it did hit me, it's going to be my fault. Wow. And this is a one-way street. And just staying on my lane. And that truck just pulled over right in front of me because might makes right. And riding with the motorbikes, they're just slowly creeping into your lane just like that without even licking. That's a stupid move. And if you're not paying attention, and oh my goodness, this, this truck, oh this bus, and these guys are crazy. They're reaching out. I know they're trying to say that they're going to the left, but they could have just used their blinker. Well, are you in a hurry or late for an appointment? Don't worry, folks. We have you covered. We can irritate you with trikes. Trikes are motor vehicles with um, motorbikes with sidecar and can take up up to seven Filipinos in one trip. They usually ran about 10 miles an hour. So basically, if you're stuck behind them, you either just be patient or risk your life to pass them flying onto oncoming traffic, which is likely you're going to have another truck in front of you because they're the ones congesting our streets. That's our public transport. So beware of those. Just like now, there's a trike right in front of me. And I cannot pass him. And another motorbike. I can't pass him because this is... I'm approaching... It's a blind curve and obviously can't do that. There's oncoming traffic. 
and they're just running around 10 miles an hour, so I just have to be patient. Very slow. And yeah, I just have to very I just have to wait if I can even pass him. But if not, I just have to wait behind him. It could actually cost me like 30 minutes just to go from point A to point B. And look at this. This is a trike with a load of firewood. And this kid is just hanging without any protective gear. <laughs> and I can't pass him either because he's on the bloody middle of the road. You know, go to the right or just in the slow lane. But no, why do that? Just stay in the middle and weave back and forth. And there's a truck right there on the right. Roads here are also used for parking. And look at this guy. His, his trike is broken down and he's fixing it right there on the spot. Like, while his ass is hanging on the street. He's, he doesn't look worried though. But that's a typical scenario here. And coming into the blind curve. There's another trike in distress. I'm oh, no, sorry. That's a motorbike. It's either broken down or it ran out of gas. So why go to the gas station? Just bring your, just drag your motorbike to the gas station. <laughs> and they're just walking slowly beside the road. And yet another vehicle in distress. This time there are what, five or six kids, um, lads that are pushing, <laughs> pushing the car. And as you can see, guys, I have no choice but to wait behind them because there's an oncoming traffic. This is going to be in the junction. I can't possibly pass them. And yep, just I'd rather maybe I just stay here behind them. Just wait. And they're trying to push it down the hill, I guess, to to start it. And this truck on the left is trying to squeeze in and he just made his way in and there's your typical Filipino clown car guys <laughs> although they they look they're having fun <laughs> speaking running out of gas so I have to get gas so let me pull right over here whoa did you see that what the heck he didn't even look Full tank, please. Full tank premium. Thank you. So there you have it, guys. We don't say fill her up. We say full tank. And you have to make sure uh, they're putting the right gas. <laughs> because we don't, uh, unlike in the West, you guys go out of the car and you do it yourselves. Here, we don't do that. We have gasoline attendants. Traffic signs here in the Philippines seem to be ignored by most people. So what I'm going to do is park right next to a stop sign and let's see how many people actually stop. All right, let's see. Oh, that guy didn't even look to the right, but he looked to the left, but he didn't stop. Another guy didn't even bother stopping. Nope. Why stop at a stop sign? There's two motorbikes. Well, at least that lady looked to the left and right. I can give her that. Give credit for that. <laughs> but didn't, she didn't stop. And this lady didn't stop either. Yep. Stop sign doesn't mean anything in the Philippines. So you're having a good day. Just driving around very calm on a sunny day. Then all of a sudden, there are a lot of things in front of you like obstacles in front of you it's either a parked car or an animal or even people just crossing without even using the pedestrian lane so be careful guys because we filipinos can be magicians too suddenly we just appear in front of you and get this even if even if it's the national highway drivers tend to just park like right of the road 
they don't have any clue or they don't have, I don't know. They're, I'm not sure if they're just being rude or they just don't know the rules, but don't be surprised to see a lot of cars parked right beside the road. And get this, even though you're in a city, there's a lot of animals in the road, whether it's a dog or a cat or a cow or a goat. So as I said, this is the Wild West. So be careful, guys, and especially um, with the pedestrian because people just cross. For example, this lady with a bucket, she's crossing the road and she almost got hit by that motorbike. Oh my goodness, that is very dangerous, guys. And this guy walking slowly on the road, on the bloody road, and I think he's drunk. And you really have to watch out for everything on the road, guys. For example, an animal just like this one. Oh my goodness, will you swerve to the left or jam on the brake? That pooch will be dead. And this is my favorite. A car. Parked car right in the junction. In a busy junction. With this obstacle thing, for you know, placed for unknown reason. So I have to go around him. And there is another truck park right in front of me basically guys this is the reason why our traffic is so slow here because they just park everywhere so guys you have to be careful while on the road with these motorbikes because they're going to swarm your car from left to right from front to back and they're going to um pull pull in front of you without even using their blinker and by the way, if there's an accident and if there's a fatality, whether it is their fault, you're going to be blamed for it because you're in a bigger car. So be careful, guys. And um, yeah, I don't want to put price on anything. But here, even if you, if you don't have insurance, you can arrange something with the family. I'm, I don't know how much the price is, but just be careful, guys, because even if they're the ones who hit your car, especially if you're a foreigner, you're going to get in trouble. So be careful. Well, if you're a nervous driver, driving with motorbikes is not for you. They're everywhere. They're even in your blind spot, in front of you, beside you. They're just trying to squeeze in whenever they can. They're in every crevice they can possibly be. And look at these guys. They're in my lane. They're in my lane. <laughs> and this is a very busy junction. Somehow, we can read minds and we can just decide or agree who's, who's going to go first. And if you think... You're safe. Just look at what's going to happen next. And there's going to be another motorbike just like that. Passing in front of you. They're kind of a daredevil. And they're everywhere. Just have to be careful. And this guy in my blind spot is actually single-handedly driving while texting. Can you imagine doing that in your country? You're going to be ticketed. You're going to be they're going to suspend your license and this lady is driving in the wrong side of the lane. And there's this truck in front of me in my lane. This is crazy. <laughs> so I thought I'd take you out at night to show you what goes on when the sun goes down while we're driving here you really have to be careful at night guys because this is a two lane and voila all of a sudden it's one skinny bridge without any warnings no orange cones or anything just just be careful guys you could be driving at night and bang piles of dirt in the middle of the road with no warning signs nothing if you're driving fast you can flip your car and be in an accident just when you thought you've seen everything, there are vehicles that are riding at night with no light. Check this trike. No headlight, no taillight, nothing. And guess what? 
if you hit one of those, it's gonna be your fault. And you, if you think that's the only one, check this out. There's this motorbike flying without taillight, no headlight, in a busy street at night. I think that's crazy. It's suicidal. Who would do that? <sighs> I think I've had it for today, folks. So what did we learn today? Well, if you already live here, you probably didn't see anything new. This was just an average, unremarkable day out on the road. But if you haven't been behind a wheel in the Philippines yet, these are the things I hope you remember. First, don't expect to find the Western rules you're used to regarding things like right-of-way, yielding, turn signals, traffic lights, and four-way stop etiquette. None of it applies here. Never count on people to stop, not even at a stop sign. Assume that people will pull right out in front of you without even looking and get angry if you blow your horn at them, like it's you that did something wrong. Driving at night here is far more dangerous and things can suddenly appear in front of you in the pitch black, like animals, parked cars, road work signs, or my favorite, telephone poles cemented right in the middle of the lane. Also be aware that some drivers are hurtling through the dark with no headlights. And if you hit them, it's still gonna be your fault. And if you're a foreigner, chances are that any accident is gonna be your fault. Crazy unfair, but that's just the way it is. And it's my job to warn you about it. But if you're still not afraid of the congestion, the chaos, and having to survive an obstacle course every time you wanna get from point A to point B, then maybe I'll see you out on the roads here. And don't worry, if it's dark, my headlights will be on. Till then, folks. You know how cute I always thought you were. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your lifeguard, keeping you from drowning in a sea of doubt about life in the Philippines. I won't let you just dive right into the deep end without informing you about our culture and customs. And you can always count on me to take care of all the little details along the way. What is that in the pool? All right, everyone, out of the pool, out of the pool. Now we're gonna have to shut it down for weeks and get a hazmat crew in here, damn it! Oh my god, this is so disgusting! Which one of you subscribers did that?